David, are you commentating? What's going on? Okay. Startlist will be next. In. We've got 70 kilos all the way up to, I think it's about 90 kilos is the heaviest that we're expected to see as an opener. And just because these are the weights that have been nominated doesn't necessarily mean the lifters will come in on them. They have opportunities to change them on two occasions, but that's how it's looking so far. And this is from last December's Commonwealth Championships, the silver medalist from four years ago, the British champion, the winner of the Commonwealth Championships in December. And uh, a lifter who was fourth in the Commonwealth Games back in uh, 2014. But this is 77 kilos on the bar for Ang Su. So a few technical issues that this lifter has to work on. She is young, just 19 years of age. But let's take a look here. Shoulders forward, shoulders back, hips flip forwards, bar kicks out. Well, it's not rocket science to see where she ends up. And it's that swing on the bar that causes all the problems. The early arm bend, there's a few things here that could really be sharpened up on to make the lift more efficient, smoother. Ideally, you want that bar traveling as close to the body as possible. Therefore, your force has to go down. At the moment, her force is going forwards and backwards. And also, unfortunate for her at the moment, it doesn't look like uh, anybody else wants this weight. So either she uses the minute and a half she has at her disposal to recompose, or she decides to push the weight up and gain a little bit more extra time. But I've got a feeling she's going to come out and do this. Yeah, I think this would attempt. be the sensible call. It's not like she's in with a chance of a medal. This is more about personal achievement and seeing how far she can push it. And 73 to 77, that's a respectable jump. She's gone 78, so the coaches have seen fit to go up. So they've just confirmed to her that she's got a bit more time and well, <laughs> provisionally, it'll be another young athlete, 16-year-old uh, Tanisha Thornton from Malta. Here she comes. With only 40 seconds, but coming up the ramp, there's Jesmond, coach looking after her. And this is uh, a remarkable talent. Three times she's won the Youth World Championships, three gold medals, but quite a prospect. A disappointing opener when I'm stating the obvious. It just didn't look sharp enough through the middle part of the lift and as a 16 year old coming onto a platform like this it is a huge experience technically pretty good just leans a little bit as the bar passes the knees and it's that movement backwards of the shoulders which sends the hips forwards and the bar swings just leaves it in front just needs to be a little bit feistier through the middle yeah well a number of these lifters have already met each other in competition in fact uh, the Commonwealth Championships last December in Tashkent in Uzbekistan were actually incorporated into the World Championships. So a lot of these lifters have been on a big stage as we see uh, someone at the other end of the experience scale in her fifth Commonwealth Games. And this is uh, Clementina Agricole representing the Seychelles, who back in 2006 almost got a bronze medal but totaled up 152 kilos and was denied by a fraction of extra body weight which counted in those days oh should have snatched it timed out 
That is an error, an error from the coaching staff. Not getting her to the platform in time, but also as a lifter, she would have known how long was on the clock. There is a clock on the platform side. Buzzer went as she was about to go. She should have snatched it and hoped for the best. But that is a really basic, fundamental error that both coach and athlete should have been far more switched on to. And that glance across was at the clock. She was saying to me that every Commonwealth game she's been to, there's been some sort of incident. Four years ago in the Gold Coast, uh, it led to shoulder surgery. And she finds herself at the moment uh, in a really difficult position. Let me just explain. She sat on the floor there. She's literally just off the platform. There are no chairs for the, for the lifters. Uh, and, and, and weightlifters don't like to walk, it's as simple as that. And it's a fair walk back to the warm-up room, so maybe they would do well to have a couple of chairs there. Well, as you can see, there's not actually uh, a lot of space, but there is a, enough there for maybe a chair or two, but Malaysia now and Marchita. Marlene Marchita for Malaysia. Out for her second attempt at 78 kilos. A five kilo uh, increase. it close there on the time as well down to three seconds only remaining on the clock but once again there's just not the spark that's necessary to generate enough upward momentum on the bar we'll take a look here it's all one speed there's not really that powerful acceleration that we see from some of the lifters so we're just stuck a little at this moment on 78 kilos, but here is uh, Tanisha Thornton. As I said, uh, these women are familiar in terms of competition. We have the gold, silver, and bronze medalists from the Continental Championships from last December. This is the woman who took the third place. Better, sits tight at the bottom. Very long levers does Tanisha Thornton have. 16 years of age, 59 kilos. She's got a bit more filling out to do over the next few years. Good drive of the leg. Sits deep. Is fast and confident underneath the bar. Well done. Good recovery. Interesting. She's moved up uh, weight classes for this category from the Junior Worlds earlier this year when she was eighth at 55 kilos. She, she reminds me very much of my stature at that age. Uh, I think she'll find that over the next few years, she may find herself in the 64s. Now, this is uh, Ang, who failed at 77, got 78. Listed now for her third attempt. Sadly, that leaves her on her opener of 73 kilos. Big throw back of the shoulders there. It's just not sharp enough technically. This kind of lifting results in a lifter being quite inconsistent. The bar drifts a long way from the body. The Singapore girls were saying to me, uh, Michaela, that, you know, back home, uh, you know the criteria for support they're always looking for winning results and they have a little battle on their hands because they're saying well you know you can't expect us to deliver the world in under four years you've got to give us time to actually develop it's the same with any country especially the uk as well you know you, they want results but they're not prepared to support you to achieve those results and it sometimes takes one or two individuals to do it off their own back and off their own merit before support is established so Marlene, she opened up on 73 kilos, failed at 78 and third and final attempt in this first half of the competition. Well, she equaled her personal best, but 
sadly disappointingly really she couldn't go any further yeah very disappointing she won't be happy with that you see the positions here not bad off the floor just not powerful enough now this might be a sign as well of a lifter who's who's dropped body weight and just to give people watching an idea everybody trains overweight everybody will be over the weight category and what happens in the last few weeks leading into competition these lifters will cut to make the category and if they've timed it to perfection the first time they drop under the weight category will be out the way in um, sometimes lifters will have lost too much weight or done it too quickly and be dehydrated and lacking the energy so onto the stage comes the paramedic from australia brenna keen posted 78 originally as her opening snatch gone up to 79 for this first attempt to put the brakes on right on the edge of the platform oh, <laughs> the camera I'm, I'm looking at the coach miles he just uh, pulsated his chest there and that was close good position off the floor jumps back a little leaves it in front has to stagger forwards look how hard she put the brakes on very well done from brenner to recover there's miles the uh, coach in picture there miles uh, widow and i tell you uh, there will be a few uh, holding their breath back home in Australia, more from that, but now 79 kilos for the second attempt, so Clementina's increased the weight by a kilo for this second attempt. Powerful, but too much swing. The power, the strength, the speed, it's great, but it's irrelevant if you're not in the right position. Now, of course, this means she's under real pressure. Tips forwards a little, it's that shoulder swinging back. So you're going to see two styles of lifting here. One where a lifter tries to lift the bar up, they use the upper body and lean on it. As soon as the shoulders go back, the hips will go forwards, the bar will kick out and away from the body. Now a lifter that doesn't try tugging at it, but instead extends powerfully and drops straight under, will generate their force downwards into the platform, and the bar will stay a lot closer. Well, she said to me, you know, this is her fifth Commonwealth Games. She's hoping it's going to be lucky number five, but she's under enormous pressure now because the third attempt will be the last attempt if she fails to lift up the bar and I don't think there's any sense or question about pushing the weight up and buying more time I think she's just got to come out and do this just over a minute to come out and she should start the walk here it is up the ramp big moment myself ever like to see lifters under this sort of pressure but it's something that happens and it's something that they have to deal with and it's a moment for us and you can hear behind us the crowd know yeah, the situation right. they're so getting behind her they want her to do this so let's I hope that she can come on this one to stay in the competition come on certainly it's a weight she can do snatch and that is it game over and she's indicating time out this potentially is the end for her well she didn't uh, say that there wouldn't be another commonwealth games and she is 34 years of age that doesn't mean to say that she couldn't go for one more cycle but actually when you get to this stage in your career you really need to keep getting a result or two to keep the confidence and the motivation together twice she's been fourth in the commonwealth games and she really hoped that she could break forward and maybe go for a medal but sadly that is not to be 
And so to South Africa and Annika Schwies, 29 years of age. First attempt, the bar exactly on 80 kilos for her opener. to see a good first attempt. Yeah, really nice lifting. No problems there from Annika Spies. Ships forwards a little. She was on her toes, but landed it in the groove. That's the thing, when the bar does swing, it's, you hope it's going to be in the groove every time, but more often than not, it goes forwards or backwards. So, Jasmine there just whispering a few last words into the ear of uh, Tanisha. I bet he's saying, if you get this, you can have that pizza tonight. All of these girls would have been cutting weight. She's not a fan of pizza. I happen oh, to know not? that. No. <laughs> uh, well, that's the last words of advice now. This will be just about keeping the lifter confident in their own ability. Not much that can be changed technically right now. Go out there and give it your all. 16 she's very much a lifter for the future but having already medaled on a big competition stage in the world championships in the commonwealth championship section she's had a flavor of what it's like to work on a big stage plenty of time well that's a, a real disappointment uh, and of course, she's got the 78 kilos from the second attempt. Really good extension, but as you can see, they're never quite at arm's length. Doesn't matter how much Jasmine leans, he's not going to give any more height on the bar. It is a characteristic of coaches, isn't it? It is. You can't quite understand why they lean. <laughs> no. I mean, there's no logic to it. No, I do it myself, <laughs> and I, I laugh at other coaches doing it, and I catch myself doing it. It gives you a much better view when you tilt your head. Going to work. Poppy Hazarika for uh, India. From a humble background in Assam. She works these days as a technician in the Indian Railway. She is the national champion. And 81 kilos she has requested for her first attempt. Not overly convincing, but it is a good first attempt. How many more kilos does she have? Well, we'll wait and see. There are still four more lifters yet to open their campaign. We're getting towards the business end of proceedings right now. As we see the replay, small drop of the chest as she starts to stand, which means she has to recover forwards. But as long as she stays on the four meter square platform, the lift will be fine. Good long arms throughout to give the legs a chance to be maximally effective good focus from start to finish barely three years experience in the sport but at least she's got a good lift to get her on her way she took the silver medal in December in the Commonwealth Championships won by Nigeria she was the runner-up and Tanisha Thornton who just failed before her her third attempt took the bronze medal So we go to Northern Ireland now and Hannah Crimble from uh, Newtonards in County Down. And uh, a big posse of fans, including the family, flew in last night to Birmingham International Airport to support her. She's a, a nurse as well as a weightlifter and opening up here on 83 kilos opening up in fact on her personal best total in competition in this weight category it's unlucky 
first attempt. Clearly strong enough. Well, come on, Hannah needs to refocus now. Put that behind you. Treat the next attempt as a first one. She's so got uh, two coaches, Sean Brown and Tim Graham, on her side. Yeah, not bad at all. Technically, does hit a good straight position, but I'd say the weight's drifted onto her toes. Needs to be driving through flat feet. Well, Brenna Keane. I wonder what uh, Mum Helen and Dad Jack and her husband Sam thought of the first attempt. Remember, she was right on the front of the platform. And she's moved the bar up here from 79 to 83. So four kilo increase. Oh, it's short. Come on, needs to use the legs. Let's have a look here. It just throws the hips into the bar. It's not, I thought she, we see and hear a lot of coaches coaching to drive the hips through to get the hips into the bar. But if you do that and drive the hips forward, where do you think the bar is going to go? You want to be driving down into the ground. And if you do that, the consequence is that the hips come through and up. What's interesting, though, and we have to put this into context, her first competition of any sort in this sport was in March of 2021, uh, barely 18 months ago, when uh, Brenna lifted 65 and 90 kilos in the clean and jerk. So another relatively inexperienced athlete. And Hannah Crimble out now for her second attempt at 83 kilos. That's better. Come on. Needs to steady. Come on, then. Great lifting. And she knew she had that. As soon as we saw the smile, she knew she was back in control. There was a moment when she wasn't sure, but she did well to sit tight with it. Let's have a look here. Maintains good position. Great straight position off the uh, through extension. Fighting to hold it. Fantastic recovery. Yeah, and that'll be a big relief to boyfriend Luke, who's sitting behind us, along with her two sisters, Holly and Rebecca. So, Brenna, third attempt. Really important to stay close. What a test this is for her. Much better. Loads of leg power that time. That's the way to do it. Wow. Great recovery. That was the best of the three by a million, million miles. And miles it is. Her coach who high fives with her. Yeah, a little bit rounded in the shoulders, a bit army off the floor. But there was guts and determination in that lift. She wanted that. Well done. Yes, says Miles, and well, just a pity, Michaela, having seen that, that she didn't do that first time. It is, but, you know, hindsight's a great thing. She'll learn from those mistakes and come back more experienced next time. But that's a, a really good recovery from uh, Brenner. So that gives her 83 kilos to take forward into the second part of the competition. And now India and Poppy Hazarika. This is on her personal best mark, 84 kilos. As I said, after the first attempt, how much further can she go? She's chosen for a three kilo increase, but there was little spark. The first attempt she snuck under, this one just not powerful enough. Trying to use the upper body to muscle it, just delaying by a split second the time to drop under the bar. You want to be under that bar before it changes direction. She's going to be following herself. Clock is on one minute, 50. Two minutes when you follow yourself. So she'll need this time to recover. Even if she feels ready to come out, it's important the coach holds her back until the clock is at least a minute. And 
Now, even Tuesdays come back down into the warm-up room. I'm not sure I would do that because it's a, a decent walk, maybe 15, 20 metres down that slope, and you've got to come back. But they're doing that because she's chosen to go up in weight. Still three lifters to start, so the bar changes to 85 kilos for what may well be the appearance for the first attempt to Tadi Dasini of Canada, the silver medalist four years ago in Brisbane in the 58 kilo class as it was then, coached by her dad, Ivan. And of course, the Canadians in good mood after Hannah Kaminsky's bronze just yesterday. So, 24 years of age from a very small village in Quebec. of the head as she goes back now what that does is actually throw the shoulders back not ideal you want all of the effort coming from the lower body but it works for her it's her style of lifting and sometimes lifters pick up these little subtleties that can then be very hard to shake off well, so far so good for Annika Spies a five kilo increase so significant at this uh, body weight, 80 to 85 kilos for a second attempt, but the opener was rhythmical and a good first lift. Rhythmical is not good enough, it needs to be powerful. One attempt remaining to find the legs from somewhere. Still, Jess Gordon Brown of uh, England, and also Rafiatu Folashade of Nigeria to start their campaigns. So Hannah Crimble comes out for uh, her third attempt, and you can hear the support right behind us here. Delighted that she got that second attempt. It's always nerve-wracking. You, you're desperate for your athlete to get their first one, or the at least get one of them on the board. She's done that. Now let's see how far she can open up. Just two kilo increase. Well, they pushed her a little bit. She pushed herself. Wasn't to be on this particular day. Yeah, just not enough spark through the middle. It just looks a little bit one speed. Good extension. Needs to be a bit sharper on the way up and even sharper to transition underneath the bar. It's a split second that you've got to drop under. So Annika speaks to try 85 kilos once more, see whether she can correct here now second attempt lack power yeah a sign this is normally when a, when a lifter is not looking sharp with the legs it's often a sign when body weight has been dropped not always the case um, but let's hope now that we see that acceleration as the bar passes the knee much better very very good indeed and again you've got to ask the question why didn't that happen on the second attempt but well, she's corrected it and that's what matters that five kilos is so important she finishes a snatch with 85 she's not too far away from the top runners very good recovery and the smile says it all yeah really important
So onto the stage representing England, Jess Gordon Brown. An athlete who has been pretty effective in not one, not two, but now this weightlifting her third sport. Six kilos to go into first place. Yeah, very good lifting from Jess Gordon Brown. Let's take a look here. Start position, shoulders a little forward to the bar, but hits really good extension. It's that forward position off the floor, which forces her to correct and step forwards. Really happy with the opener. So, looking to level up in terms of kilos, this is Hazarika Poppy. But this is her third and final go. This will be very interesting because I think we both agree here, it's right on the margin. There's, I, I'm really, really surprised that they opted to go up two kilos. Based on how the second attempt looked, just lacking that spark. I'm not sure I understand the coaching logic here. Yeah, they're desperate to stay with the medals, but this isn't about medals on a snatch or a clean and jerk. This is about the overall. So my view is get as many kilos under your belt as you can. And well, she finds herself right back down the pecking order with just 81 now on the snatch. The former figure skater. Well, until she was 12 years of age. These days, studying to be a chiropractor at uh, Trois-Rivières University. And it's the silver medalist from four years ago. 87 kilos for the lead. That would give her a one kilo advantage over Jess Gordon-Brown. We said right at the beginning of this competition, Mikhailo, that this was going to be close, but this is really emphasizing just how important it is to make lifts. It is, and I'm just seeing too many lifters right now with a lack of spark. There's just a lack of power being generated through the second phase of the lift. When the bar passes the knees, that explosion upwards is where all the upward momentum is generated. And it's just not happening for some of these girls right now. We talked about consistency at the moment. The only thing we've got consistency in is the number of failed lifts. Yeah, 16 mm, fails so a far. Lot, a lot of missed yeah. lifts. And though those that can be most consistent with successful lifts are gonna be the ones that challenge for the medals. Yeah, for Tally, that was a pretty important second attempt that she's lost. And, you know, if she doesn't make this, she gets left on 85 kilos. So, for example, advantage Jess Gordon-Brown and, of course, the lifter from Nigeria yet to start. Yeah, she needs this. Needs this to really stay close, stay in the mix. That's a much better attempt from Tally. Really gave it everything this time. Once again, finding the spark when she needed it. I'd say, you know, I had a message earlier about the slapping of the athletes. Is it necessary? Is it appropriate? Absolutely it's appropriate. In a sport where you need to be on fire and the legs need to spark right in that split second, it's not wrong for the coach to give the athletes a slap as they come onto the platform, wake the legs up. Some of these athletes certainly need a wake up, and she had one then. Brilliant recovery. So, with that third attempt, gets a kilo ahead of Jess Gordon Brown. But here comes Jess, who's got this lift and another one to come. So, Jess, who has a personal best of 91 kilos, coming out for 89 which would establish a two kilo advantage over the Canadian. Yeah, rather than just going that one kilo, she's gone for two. She's confident in her ability, and this is about gaining as many kilos as possible going into the second half. Oh, there's the forwardness 
again. Looking to the coaches and Dave Sawyer is just saying it's okay, stay calm, we're okay. Still want a temp remaining, she needs it. Too far forward to the shoulder in my view, causing the shoulders to go back slightly and that little jump away from the bar, leaving it out in front. It's tiny. I'm being really critical here technically, but if you leave that bar out in front and you're not under, you're in trouble. So, at the moment, uh, very evident that Rafiatu uh, Fonashadi Lawal at the moment, who posted 90 kilos as her opener, quite happy to let Jess lift out and take her third attempt. Or, there she is all wrapped up. And Jess now with Andy Callard on the left and Dave Sawyer. And the discussions now will also be around, are we staying on 89 or shall we go up? I think right now it would be sensible to get the 89, bearing in mind how strong the Canadian has just performed. Tally is on her heels, or in fact, she's actually in the lead or ahead of Jess at the moment. So this lift is important and I think it's necessary not to go heavier at this stage. Yeah, the personal best of the Nigerian lifter is 92 kilos. So... Huge support for her. She wants calm. She's asking the crowd for quiet. Big lift. How close can you get? You're not much closer than that. It was overhead. She is strong enough, but strength alone is irrelevant. Not quite in position. Let's take a look. Really good power. You could see the spark in that that was been lacking from some of the other lifters. Just left it in front one more time. That is a shame. She'll be desperately disappointed. She is not down and out. She has one lift on the board, but she has some work to do as we approach the second half of the competition. One lifter remaining. Yes, at the moment, Canada ahead of England and now Nigeria. So, Rafi Hatu for Shadi Lawal, opening up on 90 kilos, two kilos below her personal best. This to take the outright lead. Oh, there's power. Can she study? Goodness me. I am not quite sure what I just saw then. How on earth did she hold that? She's been giving it two to one. I thought the elbows were good. I saw no infringement other than the fact it was a little erratic. Let's take a look here. Whips the shoulders a long way back, horribly so. Got the stress on the shoulders. She fights to contain it. Well, you cannot fault the guts. This lifter has a lot of spark. I think she's pinched it from everybody else. There, goodness me, you normally see a lifter stagger forwards, not backwards. So, 91 kilos. It establishes the Commonwealth Games record at 59 kilos for the snatch. The standard was 87 kilos. And she's got two more attempts now. Both Tally of Canada and Jess of England will be hoping that the Nigerian runs into trouble here so that she doesn't get too far away from them. Yeah, they won't be too much watching the scoreboard or anything, but they will be saying to their coaches, did she get that lift? And they will be interested because if the Nigerian runs away with this, it's going to be very, very difficult to make up the deficit, considering how strong uh, that Rafaito is on the clean and jerk. She's got a big 110 posted compared to 105 from Canada. Let's have another look here. 106 from Jess Gordon-Brown. Really good extension, good floats on the bar, but out of position. And that bar going backwards, 
She only managed to save that because she tried standing straight out. You do not want to be running around with that kind of weight overhead. Remember, these young women just 59 kilos and under in body weight. So, second attempt and the bar going up four kilos. And of course, this would increase the game's record, but it did. Games records won't be in any of their minds at this particular moment here. This is all about lifting the weight, setting yourself up to earn one of those precious medals. Five seconds. Three, two, one. And time down. I can't blame anybody else, my dear. There's a clock on the platform. Coaches would have known as well. All she had to do was flick her eyes to the left and she would have seen the clock. It's a basic error. There is a big screen, a uh, big clock as you walk up onto the stage. There is a clock on the stage as well. You literally just look slightly to the left. The interesting thing where the coaches are is that they're standing in the archway as opposed to being a little bit more in front where they can actually see the attempt board. Yeah, but there is a clock here, David. It's not, the the great, it's not, it's not the, great the best angle for the coaches. No. Um, you're quite right with that. It might be best for that clock to be on the other side. I mean, it, the thing for the coaches, it's the job of the coach to make sure they can see the clock. It's the job of the coach, first and foremost, to get the lifter to the platform in time. They did not get her there early enough. She, the clock was already quite a way run down from that one minute. Now, I'd say right now there's a, a fair amount of fire and flare within the Nigerian camp. And as a result, instead of coming back out... At uh, 94, she's 94. coming out at 95, yeah. yeah. Indeed, they put it up a kilo, and... Oh, dear, yeah. <laughs> dear. That's that, yeah. yeah. Who can you blame? Yeah. And it drives me crazy seeing this happen, because athletes spend years training for this moment, and coaches do not. Yeah, but if the coaches have been there and they've seen the situation, they could have shouted. Course, I mean, the coaches make basic errors because they're not switched on, and they don't practice, they don't train. If a lifter is going to dedicate so much of their time to this moment, don't let a coach ruin it. Well, she's got a good 60 seconds now, so time should really not be an issue. But you can see the coaches there, they're just sort of buried in the arch. Not easy to see, impossible to see the attempt board from where they are. Well, she'll be disappointed. There will be a discussion, but the two beneficiaries are Tully Dassini for Canada and Jess Gordon-Brown, because it means that the Nigerian Rafi Atu really has uh, left there on 90 kilos. Yeah, the, the so the look there is it to say what happened well i'll tell you exactly what happened it looked almost from a technical point of view like she was setting up to do a backflip the amount of backward swing on the shoulders no wonder the bar swung so much overhead not a great lift technically and it doesn't surprise me that it's a bit erratic look here we'll take a look from this view this is perfect angle to see watch how far the shoulders go backwards and the bar is away from the body so as a result of that, four kilos only separating the top three at the halfway stage in this women's 59 kilo Commonwealth Games final. All to play for at this stage. It really does keep it close. Yeah, and those two failures and all that uh, has gone on, what the Nigerians have got to do is they've got to have a complete mindset reset for the clean and jerk. And uh, there you have the situation. As I said, four kilos separating the top three. Then a recovery by Annika Spies on the third attempt to get 85 kilos. Hannah Krimble also recovering, 83 kilos, equal there with uh, Brenna Keane. The higher ranking place always going to the lifter who achieves the weight first. And uh, there from India, Poppy Hazarika, 81 kilos. And the real disappointment there for the Seychelles, Clementina Agricol, very experienced, fifth. Commonwealth Games, but not making any of the three lifts 
bombing out, as we say, and unable to take any further part. That's always sad for a lifter to bomb out, especially at this level. Never nice to see it happen to anybody. But unfortunately, at this kind of level, where there are only what is only one medal to play for, the overall total, it just means that we won't see her take any further part. So, a first part where we saw more failure than success, to be honest, Michaela. Let's have a look at what happened in the snatch phase of this 59 kilo championship. Best three lifts from the first half, starting with uh, Jess Gordon-Brown, who at the moment finds herself in the bronze medal position. Yes, she does. A really good 86 kilo snatch. Unfortunately, unable to progress any further. But this is the lift that she has to stick with. Tali Dacini, silver medalist four years ago. Just one kilo ahead of Jess Gordon-Brown. It really is close between those two. They will be battling to the bitter end. And, well, this was the first attempt, and it almost didn't go to plan at all. No, it really <laughs> didn't. There were some errors from the coaching staff, a timed-out lift on the second one, and a very erratic third attempt, even more erratic than what we've just seen. But that was good enough for the lead at the halfway stage. It is all to play for as we go into the clean and jerk in this women's the lift. If you can make that contact with the ground and get your energy going downwards. Equal and opposites, the bar should come up nicely. So here the first attempt of uh, kilos that have been posted for the clean and jerk. But they won't necessarily be the weights that they'll open up on. So Jess, who posted 105, and uh, Tali uh, Dacini of Canada, also 105. They are much more in touch than they might have been. They certainly are, and it really does make for a great second half to this competition. And we are about to get things underway as our first lifter is coming up onto the platform as we speak. start with uh, one of the women relatively new to the sport and this is uh, Sue N. Sarah Ang of Singapore. One out of three lifts made in the first half so just bringing forward 73 kilos but first Commonwealth Games big occasion for her but of course really intent on getting, if she can, three good clean and jerk attempts to get as decent a total as she can. And that's the first attempt, and it's a good attempt. And she gets the 85 kilos to go with the 73 from the snatch and a total of 158 kilos. A yeah, nice opening lift. Technically pretty good as well on the jerk. Puts her a little behind the bar, but not bad. Bar is over shoulders, nice elbow lock. We tend to think of the cleaner jerk, Michaela, as being that much more forgiving than the snatch where precision is absolutely the name of the day. Yeah, precision is important in both lifts, 
but uh, the snatch has very little room for error. The clean is a little bit more, but then you've got the factor that the weight is heavier as well. Uh, the, the jerk, I would say, needs to be as precise as the snatch, uh, especially if you're going to stay safe. Maintaining shoulder safety and back safety is important. Uh, we, we see a lot of lifters get themselves into to, to some pretty ugly positions. But, um, you know, it's what works for, the, for them. And also, when the lifters are under pressure, when the weights get heavy, things do sometimes break down. And that's one of the reasons why it's so important to master the movements before loading. Something that is not spent enough time or focus on in a lot of gyms. If you are lifting and you're starting out in this sport, if your coach has you load the bar in the first session, then question why. It takes many, many years to master the movements, and I would recommend thousands of repetitions on something with no weight, no challenge at all, something that's really easy until your body gets used to the movement pattern. Well, here comes the next examination. She's following herself. This is Ang of Singapore. And a significant increase, five kilos, for her second attempt. You tend to see the bigger of the increases on the second attempt. And then if she were to make it, maybe one or two more but that would be the pattern of attack. A minute at her disposal as she comes up the ramp in the gloom and the dark. <laughs> I was just thinking exactly <laughs> that. They can really do with a spotlight back there. But it's, um, yeah, it really does create that, uh, I don't know, that excitement. The lifter comes out of the dark into the spotlight. bit of progress good drive to arms length the back leg a little straight let's just talk for a moment as well about foot positioning in the start position feet are quite wide and when she's setting up ready for the jerk the feet are also quite wide most lifters would have their feet a little narrower it is very much a personal preference my advice is put your feet in a position ready to jump how high can you jump and wherever you choose to put your feet to jump that's where your feet should be in the start position and ready for the jerk. There you can see the hips behind the bar. The position that you put your feet in to jump is the most powerful position. I question whether she would jump with her feet that wide, but she may do. That's a really nice position with the shoulders. Great elbow lock. So as I suggested, a uh, couple of extra kilos being loaded on the bar to bring it up to 92 kilos. And I would have thought that's uh, a sensible increase for the third attempt. Yeah, agreed. She's going to have to work hard to stand with a clean. And the jerk, if it's going to go to ground, it's going to go forwards because the back leg is so straight. I would be encouraging a little bend in the back knee to allow the hips to be under the bar better. Well, if she... 94 kilos... So this is now a four kilo increase and uh, they're going to 95. I think uh, they just might be over egging this. It's a big jump, another five kilos, time will tell. I mean, I'd love to see her do this, but I sense that, you know, she's going absolutely into no man's land where she's never been before on any competition stage but then why not do it here David this is the biggest platform that she's ever been on and there's a fantastic atmosphere we've been lacking atmosphere for the last couple of years use this as an opportunity to help you lift the big weights use the adrenaline she's not going to be going for the medal she's got absolutely nothing to you to lose so why not give it a go yeah I just I just wonder whether five kilos is too big an ask here, you know, to go up from uh, opening 90 to, uh, sorry, from a 
opening 85 to 95. Well, she must believe it if she's going for it. This must be a weight she's had in mind. There's nobody else pushing her. There's no other factors that are affecting. This is sticking to their own game plan. Come on then, let's see what she can do. to her toes not to be well whether she would have made it if they'd gone 92 or 93 we'll never know but it leaves her on 163 kilos just uh, a couple of kilos below the entry total that she posted but as i said she's very much a newcomer as are most of the singapore contingent here and from one young lifter to the youngest of the class, Tanisha Thornton of Malta, bringing forward 78 kilos from the first half of the competition, only one of the three lifts made and asking for 100 kilos now. Personal best to start with. That was nice. Very good lifting. Nice technically overhead. Uses the leg power, uses good technique. That's 100 kilos. This youngster is just 16 years of age, weighing 59 kilos. Just shows how important the technique is. Very few men can lift this kind of weight in the gym. Learn to move well, learn to move optimally, and you can put some big weights overhead. Well done. Well, she lifted that weight uh, when collecting her third world youth title a little earlier this season. So 178, her running total at the moment. And Annika Spies coming out now for South Africa. This would give her a total of 185 kilos. Again, it's 100 kilos on the bar for her first attempt. That's pretty good. A little short on the drive. Does well to steady herself. Feet have to be in line before the referees will give the down signal. And the referees are very happy with that lift. And so is uh, Annika. Tips forwards a little, sits for a second, maintains the bounce to keep it e to make it easier to stand. Just drifts slightly forwards onto the toes, hence the weight is slightly forwards when recovering. So already we're seeing the lifters in this second phase enjoying the clean and jerk that much more that's right now we're asking the questions here between coach and lifter is is what weight are we going to go with so that's the discussion that's being had they've agreed on something coach now goes to the board to make the relevant change they have to do so before the clock runs 30 seconds and i really hope they made it in time because they were cutting that pretty close i've got a bad feeling about this just looking at when the coach walked away from the lifter after that discussion had finished the clock then was already at the 30 seconds and i'm <laughs> quite right that is oh, another mistake by the coach not funny annika's laughing it off now she will be pretty miffed inside and they will have a discussion afterwards why why did you screw that up you got one simple job to do coach come on fuming she's absolutely fuming and quite rightly so has to come out for the additional one kilo that's the one kilo that the bar went up automatically. She's shaking her head. She did not want to be coming out on 101. She wanted 103, 104, maybe 105. Has no choice. They'll have this discussion later or maybe tomorrow. Not a happy lifter right now. But actually, at this moment in time, she's now got to wipe all of that out of her mind. Just focus on the bar. Go and get this extra kilo and then 
put everything to rights with the third attempt. Look, they're not accepting him. That's irrelevant. She doesn't yeah. want that number anyway. Put the weight up. No, they're not. They're not going to come out for that same weight again. All the coach had to do was put the weight up. Just another kilo. Just buy a little bit more time. But to sit and do nothing. And there's two coaches as well. Forget that lift. Nothing to feed back. Well, She's going to do it herself. <laughs> Absolutely. You go, girl. Yeah, not relying on the coach. Not trusting the coach. And I totally understand that frustration. This has happened to me. Well, may as well sack the coaches. That's it. She's even checking the board herself. That is a coach that no longer, uh, a lifter that no longer trusts the coaching staff. Interesting that she's actually gone to 103. She needs to refocus now, though, recompose. Yeah. She's got to keep it together. Meanwhile, it's uh, Marlene Machita of uh, Malaysia to come out on 102 kilos. Again, a, a lifter who struggled a bit in the first phase, only got one out of three, and only brings forward 73 kilos. So this would be for a total of 175, which would only put her into third place. But of course, it is the first of her three opportunities. but she gets there and secures her first total. Let's take a look from the side. Gets good extension, just about stands. Now let's take a look at this split position, the back leg very straight, huge lunge. You can see the body shaking underneath, hits a long way behind the bar, does well to recover. Well, this will be interesting to see whether Poppy Hazarika is also more comfortable with this discipline. The whole lift looked very, very laboursome. A bit like we saw on the snatches, she's just not quite firing today. I was going to say, of all the Indian lifters we've seen so far, she is the least convincing. Technically, it's not bad. The clean was, was pretty good. She's a very tall lifter for this category. Same problem I used to have. You've got to be conditioned enough to deal with these weights. But here, there's just not much drive. And she's pushing herself away from the bar. It's a disappointing opener. the Irish family and friends of Hannah Crimble make a noise and Hannah coming out for 102 kilos for her opener. Come on, stand strong. Needs to steady. Oh dear me. It was there, then it wasn't. Left the bar in front. It's just a little bit sketchy. And she knows that was a big miss. The problem with the clean and jerk is it takes so much more out of you than the snatch. Hangs onto the bar a long, long time before dropping underneath. And that bar hit her hard at the bottom. Didn't adjust it overly well. Now let's see what happens here on the jerk. The hips for sure are behind the bar. Look at that, never underneath. So Poppy Hazarika really could have taken more time, but she's out and that's a little bit more dynamic with the clean. 
and more fired up to get the clean and jerk really important the second attempt to keep herself alive in the competition still Annika Spies of South Africa the overall leader early days though she just looked a lot more up for this lift times the clean a lot better stood straight out good adjustment see the hands are very wide that makes it easier on the jerk it's less distance for the bar to travel splits nicely to drop underneath the bar well she's got a total how much further can she go so Hannah, let's be fair uh, this young woman has only been in the weightlifting business for barely three years yeah and she needs to really find the focus the clock now is already sub 30 seconds there's only been one lifter before her she really hasn't had long to recover come on hannah come on stan she's on her toes come on well done needs to get the hips under now it's gone backwards she's in trouble now that's two missed lifts she must register the final attempt to get a total another one has escaped her well, she's got two minutes on the clock and now she needs to totally refocus she did very well to stand with this clean the problem is this has taken a lot out of her on the toes sits back had lost the bounce manages to stand now this was better she was under the bar better let's see the position oh look at that now when you don't split your feet that wide and your knees are very bent it's hard to get the hips in the right position the bum was sticking out i like to coach a longer split position with a smaller back knee bend and the hips fixed underneath and the problem she's got is that nobody else wants this weight well this but is very risky she's gone up just the one kilo and now this will hopefully bring out another lifter to buy a little bit more time even an extra kilo at this stage could be risky for her though on balance probably a sensible move though to give her the extra time we'll see but before that it's the teenager representing Malton Malta Tanisha Thornton so Tanisha at the moment currently in third place overall 103 kilos a three kilo increase here for her second attempt this is a personal best attempt does well that is a brilliant effort what does she have left the last jerk was good oh so close so difficult when you catch the bar in such an awkward position and she stopped for a cup of tea on the way up that takes so much out of the legs let's just take a look now at the slow motion replay or whatever replay we're going to get and just admire how much effort it took to stand with that clean maybe we're not gonna have time for it before the next lifter comes out yeah hannah crimble here she comes and well as they say this is the moment of truth She's there trying to get the crowd on her side. Sean and Tim. Well, come on, everybody in this crowd. Let's help her lift this. Let's get the adrenaline going. Hannah Crimble is the biggest lift of your life so far. This to make a total. It is. It's a two kilo personal best, but forget about that for a moment. This is to ensure that she gets a total and a ranking position. Needs the best clean of her life. Come on. That's good. Come on, Hannah. Come on. Well done. Brilliant yeah. lifting from Hannah Crimble representing Northern Ireland. Look at the relief. Absolute delight. Not the result she would have been aiming for, but to pull it out of the bag on the third attempt, she has a total. Let's have a look again at how it was done. Great leg extension lands it and stands straight out this time that's the difference she made the clean stronger saving some energy for the jerk and this time able to drive the bar to arm's length and hold it well done hannah
Misha Thornton long to a third attempt, 103. The last clean was tough. Oh, not to be, she's out of energy. What a shame. Finishes back on 100 kilos. We have to be content. This is a great learning experience for the 16 year old. Nice extension. Gets under, just doesn't have the legs. She'll be back to the squats as soon as she gets home. Bar going to 105 kilos for the silver medalist of four years ago. So, really getting to the uh, business end of this competition now and making every one of these clean and jerks for Tully. And it will be the same for Jess Gordon Brown of England. Absolutely vital to pile the pressure onto the Nigerian lifter when she determines to come into the competition. And remember as well, we've got Brenna Keane. Not too far down the pecking order. We're wasting no time between the clean and the jerk. Tally is clearly stronger in the second part of the competition. Has to work hard on the clean. And I think there's a good few kilos more to come. Locks in with the back, drives with the legs, gets really good extension, lands and stands, gets the timing spot on. Oh, momentarily stationary, that's all it has to be. There's no regulations over how long you have to hold the bar on your shoulders. See what Annika can do now. The disappointment of the coach's error earlier. She's chosen to go to 105. She's got a point to prove. Third and final attempt. And she can stand. Does she have the legs? She does. Point made. Well done, Annika Spies, the Republic of South Africa. Well, she's only got that two to one, it doesn't matter. There's no movement from the jury table. She can have the discussion with the coaches at a later date over what went wrong. But this was a fantastic recovery, great focus to be able to execute when it really mattered. The fact her feet were not perfectly in line is irrelevant. She got the down signal. Well, Brenna Keane, first attempt at 106, needs to get the feet in line. She didn't have the feet in line, but she got the down signal, interesting. And that's why the centre referee has failed the lift. The thing is, the referee shouldn't give the down signal until they're happy the lift has been completed. Big drive to arm's length, hips a little behind the bar, which is what caused her to run forwards. Look at that, feet are never in line. She should have just been made to hold that until they were in line. She was lucky to get the down signal. And the bar going to 107 kilos for Jess Gordon-Brown for her opener in the clean and jerk. So Tally Darsini at the moment. Leading the competition on 192 kilos. Remember in the first way, first phase tally with 87 kilos. 
One more than Jess. So brings the feet into line there to get a good lift and make sure that she stays close and in the mix. And with 193 kilos, now goes ahead of the Canadian. The jerk, very, very good. Took a moment to compose. She's in the competition with that total. So just to emphasize the fact that the Nigerian, this is Rafiatu Folashade Lawal, she won't come in until 110 kilos, that's the plan. And so Tali Dasini now moving the bar up to 107 kilos, two kilo increase here. So this by a kilo will put ahead, put her ahead of the English lifter. And once again, there's no rest between the clean and the jerk, just a split second where the bar is stationary, which is absolutely fine. Not wasting any energy at all. That was a brilliant second attempt. She's trying to stay in contention now with Jess Gordon-Brown from England. This is going to be very close between them. Yeah, you almost sense between the two of them, they have determined to actually compete against each other to ensure one or the other gets the higher position because that's what they can control. They cannot control the Nigeria. Totally, and it's down really. Is, this is here for, for Nigeria to lose, and they made mistakes on the snatch. Anything could happen in the clean and jerk. Hazarika Poppy, well, this is a big question for her, 107 kilos. Five kilo increase on the third attempt to uh, take her up to 188, which wouldn't put her in the medals. No, she's went out dizzy. of the mind, and it was was the bar a bit close. No, it's not out of the mind. She went dizzy on that. She's just struggling to uh, to gain her vision back. When you stand up with a tough clean, if it's in the wrong wrong position on the shoulders it makes it very difficult to breathe and suddenly the world closes in around you look how hard she has to work to stand she gets it off the shoulders readjusts and at this point the world is closing in everything starts to go black and it's safer to get rid of the bar than to hang on to it the bar going to 108 kilos here Second attempt for Marlene Machita of uh, Malaysia. Six kilo increase. Again, this is all about moving her up the ranking rather than going for the medals. And this would give her a total of 181, which would move her up a couple of places. Six kilos is a big increase. Knee touches the platform. Only the feet are allowed to be in contact with the platform. That's a shame. That was a really big ask. Up six kilos for a second attempt. The first attempt I didn't think was impressive enough to warrant such a big jump, but she's going for it. Let's take a look here. The position under the bar was not bad, but just couldn't quite hold it off the platform. It's interesting with Tali uh, Dasini, four years ago when she was the runner-up in the 58 kilo class, she actually collected 88 kilos in the snatch, 112 in the clean and jerk. So it's going to be interesting to see where she goes with this last attempt. But the Malaysian has one more attempt, as you can see and she's gonna 
come out and do that and then we uh, really move into the final phase but Brenna Keane still alive in the competition. She's still alive, and you know what? She's not content to just sit back and let the others fight for the medals. She's going to take a six kilo increase to go from 106 to 112 in an attempt to get in amongst the mix and make up the deficit from the snatch. Well, at this moment, were she to do that, that would take her to 195 and put her into first place. So this is very much a, a personal battle. And once again, she's managed the clean. Not to be. She's doing absolutely the right thing, splitting long, splitting low to try and get underneath. But at the end of the day, it's a little bit more leg drive that is needed. That will come. But all the way through this competition, she's been pushing herself to new levels. It hasn't come off, but in a way, she's doing exactly the right thing. This is about gaining experience. She may not be in with the shout of a medal right now. Fast forward four years, who knows? So Jess Gordon-Brown now, 107, the bar at 109. Yeah, this is only a two kilo increase, but it is an increase that would put her up into pole position. This is going to be nip and tuck between England, Canada, and possibly Australia. And this is quite defensive also in a way, because were she, were she to make this, she would get to 195 first. And if Brenna Crean is looking at 195 at the moment, even if she was to lift this, she would only go second, given that Jess makes this lift. So this is crucial. Good. Very good. Your feet are not in line. Get your feet in line, Jess. Sorry. There's a <laughs> Absolutely right, Michaela. Spotted again, and uh, she got the shout, and she did correct, and as a result, she got the three white lights. Sorry, so a, sorry a, moment just of, a moment of real concern. Here you are, Michaela. Didn't mean to deafen everybody back home, no, no, sorry. No, no. Let's take a look here at the jerk. It was overhead. There was a few wibbly-wobbly moments going forward. But what we need to make sure is the lift is finished. The lift is finished when the feet are in line. They don't have to be together just in line and that is certainly not in line that's why the referees didn't give her the down signal coaches were shouting as i was there we go job done so england go ahead of canada but now canada counter attack so tally with her third attempt on 109 kilos two kilo increase again just matching Jess, this one kilo difference will give her the lead back again. She's got it, she's landed it. And she doesn't waste any time, does she? And that's it, she's played all of her cards. Three from three, she cannot do any more. She has answered every question that has been thrown at her. She is in the lead, it is now hers to just sit back and watch. All she can do is wait and see what the other lifters are capable of. And all the time, Brenna Keane of Australia just sitting back and presumably just waiting. There are three other lifters still in the competition who could take her off the podium. But at the moment, Canada in pole position. So the bar has reached 110 kilos, which was the amount posted by this woman Rafiatu Polashade Lawal well the first half of the competition was far from convincing but if she makes this the pressure goes on everybody else and that was a very straightforward clean and the jerk is not a problem well, it's fairly obvious which part of the competition she prefers. The snatch, very, very erratic. The clean and jerk, business-like. 
Takes her four kilos clear of Tali Dasini, and she's now five clear of Jess Gordon Brown. Watch how solid the jerk is overhead. Big drive, solid as a rock. There's a lot more to come. Is she going to need it? Well, time will tell. I'm fairly sure we're going to see a good three well, or four, maybe five kilo increase. Brenna Keane has adjusted the weight that she's taken for the second attempt from 106 to 111. It's a five kilo increase now. And that would lift her up to 194, which would... Uh, it's going to be fourth place only, yeah. but what she's doing right now step is using this as a stepping stone. There's nothing worse than taking a massive jump and it feeling so heavy. Now, this is a five kilo increase, still substantial, very important stepping stone well this is absolutely new territory for her i've got a personal best in the clean and jerk at 108 kilos well now it will be a massive uh, increase if she really wants to go for it well, she's in fifth this would only put her up one place she's had a feel for the weight the question now is does she go for it again as a personal milestone or does she just go a couple more kilos in an attempt to get on the podium well, I suppose this is the moment for Jess to come out. This is huge for Jess. She's going up two kilos. This will be enough to go ahead of Canada and into the silver medal position. Remember, Canada have no more replies. So this is almost certainly a guaranteed silver lift, if successful. So 111 kilos, it is a weight that she's achieved, but it's absolutely on the money. There's a big contingent of fans here and on her side. But make no mistake. Remember, 59 kilo class, 111 kilos on the bar. This for arguably the silver medal. The clean has got to be spot on. Can she drive? Can she stand up? And she's, she's done it. She's got the legs. Come on, Jess, for silver. Dave Sawyer saying, calm down to everybody. Come on. It's come there, on. It's there. Yes. Can she That's still. It? She can. She can. She has done it. There's the somersault and into the silver medal position in the Commonwealth Games. 111 kilos, and it's taken her very best. Look how hard the clean was. The back collapsed. She very nearly didn't stand with that, but that was a tremendous effort to then find the legs, the composure to jerk it. Needed a few meters to run forwards. Look how much it meant to her. Absolutely wonderful. I'm not going to give her great marks on the landing here. <laughs> a bit of acrobatics, why not? Well done, Jess Gordon Brown. Silver medal coming your way. Well, unless uh, Brenna Keane was going to do something absolutely amazing. So now Brenna Keane has put the bar up to 114 kilos, which is an eight kilo increase. That would take her to 197. So she is going to have a crack at the Canadian. Tali Dassini, the silver medalist of four years ago. And this is the woman from Australia who's going to try and give Australia their first weightlifting medal at these Commonwealth Games. Remember, this title was won by her teammate, Tia Claire Toomey, four years ago. And also remember, she's not been in the sport of weightlifting for more than a year and three months. Can she stand? No, she can't. Too much for today. It was a big ask. She Brenna finishes a uh, respectable fifth. And Tali Dassini gets the bronze. Jess Gordon-Brown gets the silver. And uh, Rafiatu Folashade Lawal is the champion and has two more attempts to do whatever she wants. First Commonwealth Games, little more than a year in the sport. Pretty good, Michaela. Not bad at all. Lots more to come, that much is for sure.
So 115 kilos has been loaded onto the bar. Now, the interesting thing is that Jess lifted 111, which equals the standard for the Commonwealth Games. But if this woman actually delivers 115 kilos, it will be a new Games record. But she already is the champion of the class. convincing champion gold to Nigeria just comes out and shows the quality athlete that she is still has one attempt remaining will she take it and chalk and cheese between the first half of the competition the snatch and the clean and jerk yeah, a little bit Yankee on the clean drops the chest and an awkward adjustment between the two phases Tremendous leg power to drive to arm's length. Nicely underneath the bar. Has to recover back foot first. Doesn't matter. So the bar automatically goes up a single kilo, but they've got to decide about this third attempt. Actually, she doesn't need to come out with the third attempt. It's up to her. But most of the lifters here, where, where they have this opportunity take advantage of the atmosphere in the crowd there the nigerians rejoicing There's less than a minute. The clock is uh, running down. We're still on 116 kilos. I'm just wondering what's going on here. Just the one kilo increase. Just wondering if the coaches have failed to change the weight in time. Yeah, it wouldn't seem to be of any particular significance. for a clean and jerk and total games record 116 clean is better Rafiatu of Nigeria sticks the 116 overhead for a new games record in the clean and jerk and total she takes gold here in the women's 59 kilo category what a wonderful moment for her she finishes with that total of 206 kilos clear of the field. Jess Gordon Brown for England, 197 kilos. And Tali Dassini has to satisfy herself with the bronze medal with 196 kilos. It was nip and tuck all the way between those two. But the second half of this competition is where this woman really came alive. So a few minutes away from the medal presentations. Nigerians happy after the hiccups and disagreements of the first part of the competition. All comes good in the end. Well, these are the moments the athletes have dreamt of. That feeling of elation and very shortly to be standing on top of the podium so many years just for this moment and it, it doesn't last that long you think about how much time goes into the preparation and the training and it's nice for these lifters to be rewarded with their moment to shine here's the uh, english camp and i think uh, just quite emotional 
but she's very emotional. You know, these moments mean a lot, and especially as she's an athlete that's come from three different sports, to actually make it onto the podium here is, is just truly remarkable. And that was one heck of a fight there to go above the Canadian. She really gave it her all. It's hugs all round, and there'll be celebrations tonight. But at the moment, everybody wants to shake the hands of a medalist, don't they? Indeed, and of course, that is England's second medal following uh, Freya Moreau's bronze from uh, yesterday in the women's 55 kilo uh, category. <laughs> Tally, big smile from her having got the uh, bronze medal. Pretty good achievement to medal in consecutive Commonwealth Games. So confirmation as to the medal positions and indeed the ranking positions. And there you can see a decisive victory by, as you can see, nine kilos there by uh, Fodoshade Lawal for Nigeria. Just a kilo separating Jess from Tally, silver and bronze. And then Annika Spies uh, doing really respectably well for South Africa there, as she said, uh, one of her objectives was to inspire younger women from Africa to get involved. And then Brenna Keane in uh, her first big competition, terrific effort from her. Hazarika, who never really looked particularly comfortable in seventh place. And then the 16-year-old from Malta, Tanisha Thornton in eighth place. Good experience for her, likewise for Marlene Machita of uh, Malaysia and uh, Ang of Singapore. Again, a big occasion, first Commonwealth Games for her and commiserations to Agricole of Seychelles in her fifth uh, Commonwealth Games, but unfortunately failing to get a good snatch in to the first part of the competition and subsequently, of course, not being able to achieve a total. So uh, we're a few minutes away from the actual medal presentation. So let's reflect on the competition, the ups and downs, the highs and lows of the women's 59 kilo final. And of course, Mikado, that victory for Nigeria, it's a follow-up because last evening in the women's 55 kilos, it was Adiyat uh, Olorenoye who won the women's 55 kilo class. So that's two gold medals in the women's division for the Nigerians. It's fantastic for them. I mean, they put lifters into categories where they know they're going to be strong. And strong they most certainly are. They've pulled it out of the bag in those two categories. Let's see how many more they can do throughout these games. of great lifters to uh, look forward to. 
And of course, it'll be tomorrow a big day for Canada because their Olympic and Commonwealth Games champion will be on the stage at Maud Charon. Yeah, Maud Charon, Zoe Smith as well to watch out for. There's going to be numerous lifters there with, with good experience and some great credentials behind them. So Maud Charon is the Olympic champion and she is the one to watch. It's been really encouraging in this weightlifting arena. So the ceremony for the presentation of medals to the three achievers representing Canada, England and Nigeria. And uh, no less a man than the president of the International Weightlifting Federation, Mohamed Jaloud, to make the presentation. Silver four years ago. This time around, Tani Darsini, daughter of the head coach Ivan, must settle for the bronze medal. But a very creditable support and a great fight with uh, Jess Gordon Brown of England. 87 kilos in the snatch, 109 in the clean and jerk, for a total of 196 to earn the bronze medal. The silver medal. Jess Gordon Brown, 85 kilos, two kilos less than Tali Dalsimi in the snatch, but then equaling her personal best with 111 kilos to go one kilo better with 197 to get her biggest, brightest medal in the sport of weightlifting ever. Well uh, done. Look what it means to her. It's lovely to see that level of emotion. to do it on home soil but give all the credit here to the champion Rapiatu Polashade Lawal for Nigeria it was a bit wobbly although she did eventually get a games record in the snatch phase 90 kilos 116 kilos in the clean and jerk a games record a games record of the total 206 kilos and she is the champion of the women's 59 kilo class in the Commonwealth Games of 2022. And so to the anthem of her country to recognize what she has just achieved. So two Nigerian titles to their female lifters within the space of 24 hours. Nigeria smiling and happy, but so are the other two medalists. Another terrific competition. Women's weightlifting only introduced into the Commonwealth Games in 2002, but what an impact it's had. Games by games by games. And these women are giving us some really bright moments, Michaela. Some bright moments. They most certainly are. And they're going to live to shine another day as well. Very much looking forward to seeing how much further Jess Gordon Brown can go over the next Commonwealth Olympic cycle. There are a lot of youngsters in this group as well that have a huge 
future ahead of them, a bright future. They just need to go away, train hard, focus hard. Lots more opportunities where this one has come from. And Robbie Altu trying to work away off 